Hi everybody, thanks for watching this um, in class on YouTube. Uh, I'm uh, Noor, um, and I'll be talking to you today about the economic aspects of banks. Um, how regulation and banks affect the average consumer. Um, how people don't really ever realize it. Um, and uh, just some of those regulations. I've picked out about five of the main key ones that I think that people should be more aware about. So thanks for watching this. I'll try to make it quick. Um, to start things off, I'll just lead into a basis. Um, um, in about 2001, yeah, I, I believe 2001, the um, federal government required uh, banks to start following what they call a Bank Secrecy Act. Um, it's a nationwide law. It's federal federal government. Um, it deals with record keeping. It deals with re reporting um, whether you're an institution, a privately owned institution, whether it's a consumer-friendly bank like Chase, Wells Fargo, PNC, all those, um, to uh, re require um, keeping of all of the records for money transfers, um, funds, businesses, accounts, everything. They basically know everything, and no one ever thinks about it because when they walk into a bank, you know, you, you open up an account, and that's about it. No one really tells you about, oh, you have this regulation and this and this and this. Now, the people who do work in banks do have to have to do their due diligence, whether you're a car dealership, a taxi company, an apartment complex owner, um, or just an individual who gets a direct deposit into their account from their employer. Um, so that's one of the things. That's the first law. That I want to talk about the first re regulation to put it into aspect um, there are so many regulations when it comes to banks when it comes to private finance and institutions that President Trump actually signed an executive order that states that for every um, for every new regulation there has to be two old um, regulations taken away. So moving to the law, um, f uh, some of the most uh, costly regulations to our uh, economy. Um, 2001, the International Money Laundering Act and Financial Anti-Terrorism Act, which is considered the USA Patriot Act, is what you guys know it as, most people at least. Um, the goal of this um, regulation is to prevent black money, basically um, people who try to fund terrorism, um, try to launder their money, drug money, stuff like that. Now, although that although that these regulations do stop it, it still happens. It It's always still going to happen. But, um, but it's just those, it's, it's like taking those first baby steps. You know, you have to tread lightly before you can run, right? So a lot of these banks can't even afford to stay open. Um, it's actually caused a lot of banks itself, um, you know, as, as being consumers, a lot of these banks won't even take us, won't even take our uh, accounts because we're considered higher risk accounts. Um, um, if you're a higher risk, you know, a bank doesn't want to pay compliance costs and strict fees. So they'll just, they'll just wave you away. You know, if you have a cash business and, you know, it, it's just frowned upon. Um, moving along, in July of 2002, the Starbucks Oakley Act, um, short socks, it's, um, it basically um, en enacted uh, regulation towards um, large corporate and accounting fraud. There was so much of it in this country, um, in, the, in, the, in the USA, that... Um, it required external auditors, so people of their, you know, of their own agency or bureau, they'd come out to a institution, um, an accounting firm, and um, they would actually uh, have to report on the um, 
on the internal content itself. Um, since it's become so costly, I believe there was 528 initial public offerings, IPOs. Um, and since it's been enacted, now it's like 135, a 75% deficit. It's, it's, it's so, it's driven so many, um, I wouldn't want to say like consumers away because consumers don't really, but so many corporations that could supply so many jobs. So, you know, we're actually missing out on a lot of those jobs and, um, you know, it's basically just locked, um, a lot of people and retail investors have a lot of high growth investments, you know, and if they can't compete, they just can't be in the market. <clears throat> you know, they actually asked um, Bernie Marcus, which is, uh, he's the uh, creator and owner of Home Depot, um, uh, about this uh, act. And he actually said that uh, um, if, he said that if said act was imposed while he was in business in the 1970s, um, he wouldn't have been, he wouldn't been able to open up the company, get it off the ground, even take it public. And um, considering that Home Depot has one of the highest Marcus caps, um, it's kind of a shame. I mean, it's one of the largest employers in, in the U.S. itself. Um, I think they're standing at like 188 billion dollars just worth of revenue. Um, when you think about it, a lot of these regulations is it's a detriment to to not only our society, but um, to growth in the U.S. itself. The next act I wanted to, t to talk about was enacted in March of 2010. It's called the Foreign Act um, Tax Compliance, also known as FACTA. Um, President Obama did sign this into um, regulation, um, but it's although it's good, it, it's also bad, like everything in this world. Um, the aim of this act was to um, clamp down on tax evasion. It requires financial institutions to provide um, the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, with names, addresses, account details of any American um, or foreigner um, with assets over $50,000. Um, basically, the underlying assumption is that um, um, all such taxpayers should be suspected of fraudulent activity until proven otherwise. And what this has done is it's made a lot of Im immigrants renounce their, their citizenships. I mean, it, it, it affects more. So the next act I wanted to speak on is the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Act. Um, a bit about it for those of you who haven't heard of it before. It's probably the, the biggest reform um, in the U.S. financial services since the Great Depression. Um, a, you know, it created 400 new agencies and mandates, which is just more regulation, more stipulation, more fines. Um, um, some banks uh, say that as soon as it was enacted, a lot of the banks just started to drop, just go under. Um, how it affects us? Well, because of this act, uh, banks had to um, go away with free checking accounts. Also, all those jobs that you know they would employ people with at banks, they had to go under. So people were losing their jobs, you know. And there has to be an opportunity cost to the federal government issuing all these regulations. They have to think about, oh well, if I raise these rates or if I en enact these laws, banks will suffer. And if banks suffer, in turn, people will suffer. You know? Well, thanks for watching my video, guys. I hope you enjoyed um, um, some of the, the content and got to learn a little bit about how banks kind of operate and what regulations they have to uh, adhere to. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks so much.